Hi guys, Judy here. Hey, I just wanted to even out the score here. When I said that God laughs at me and with me, um, oh, it goes both ways. I totally laugh at him, at him and with him. And I do. I'm like, okay, Mr. Drama King of Kings. Okay, drama, drama, drama. Here you go again. Because you know how he just tells everyone, oh, I'm coming tonight. I'm coming tonight. And he did that to me too back in the day. He's done it to at least three people I know. He says he's coming that night to them and they know his voice and then he doesn't show up. So I'm like, yeah, drama, drama, drama. I mean, I get a little sarcastic with him. I do. And it's okay because we're friends, you know. And I give him a hard time. I laugh at him. I know you're like, I had someone tell me the other day, I can't believe you blaspheme God. You call him a drama king. And... <laughs> And like, and and I can understand what they mean. Like, I understand if you didn't, if you, I get it. But if you knew him, and you had a good relationship, and went really deep and far with him, you you'd be able to do the same thing. I mean, only good friends can call each other and and say stuff like that, you know. And um, now God is God, so He is perfect, and I'm not. Um, so you know, there is a difference between you know me and God, obviously, but. <laughs> But I give him a really hard time. I, I really do too. I, I laugh at him and I laugh with him. I laugh with him that, you know, um, uh, what he's got his creation to do right now in the last minute. I, I, I laugh. God, okay. God, my, God showed my son a vision of him in his living room, sitting in his recliner chair, eating gummy worms with boxer shorts on. And his legs are hairy. Okay, I mean, my son saw all this, all right? But I wasn't surprised because I didn't get to know God in religion. I got to know him in my bedroom at 16 years old, right? And so I saw how cool he was. He was not like what religion says he was. He talked out loud to me. I hadn't heard an audible voice answer me one day. It's the only time, but it was, I mean, it was, it was the only time it was that loud. I, I've heard him audibly before again, but this one I could have sworn... A lot of times when it's audible, it's just audible to me. But this time, like, I, it was so loud. Like, how could everyone in the house not hear it? And I'll never forget that moment in the hallway. And um, God is not... Um, I had a friend who came out of a lifestyle of sexual addiction and also alcoholism and drugs and different things and so when she came to God she had to have this holy God that she had got she needed God to be holy and only holy and you can't joke around or anything because she lived such a hard life that she needed someone to be totally straight and and totally perfect and just holy so she could be holy okay and you should be holy but I didn't live like that. I, I got saved very young in my bedroom. I'm not saying I was perfect, but I didn't go down dark paths like that. You know, I mean, I, I grew up in an abused home. That was enough. And, um, and so I, God could joke around and be silly and laugh. And one day I was, and she was a, the pastor's wife at a church I was involved in, a big, huge mega church in the area. And her and I were, the Lord made us like best friends. There was like three pastors. Her husband was one of them. And, um, and so I would tell her things and laugh and she just couldn't believe the things I said. She goes, I can't believe that you say that and that I just can't, like she knew it was authentic and real and she envied it, but she goes, I just can't, I can't see God like that. I can't, I can't, it messes me up. It'll make me, it'll mess me up. I'll just, I can't joke about things like that. I could joke about anything, drugs, sex, alcohol. I would make, I did this imitation of a drunk person and I thought it was so funny. Like, I imitate people, and I would just have fun and be silly. And she thought it was great, but it's like I could do that because I had that freedom. You know, because to the pure, all things are pure. And we all come from different walks of life. And she just, she could, she had to be rigid, she thought. I don't know. She could have changed by now. That was like 20 years ago. Um... But what I'm saying is God will be what you need him to be. And not everybody's ready for the freedom of the Lord. And that's why a lot of us are misunderstood that have a relationship with God that goes beyond just scripture and what appears right. I mean, 
if you really get to know God, he will talk to you about every little thing. He wants to be all up in your business because he's God. He's not just like a regular friend. He's also just God. He's your guidance. He's your counselor. He's your king. He's also your friend though. You know, so this whole thing about when I, we've been talking about humor and laughter and get to know God's funny side, you know, you can also laugh at him too. When you get real good friends, you can make fun of him. I mean, I do. And that's where the drama king of kings came out. Cause I was like, you are so drama. You told this person you're coming to just like you told us and you're not going to come. And I go, you're so drama. I go, you're such a drama king. He goes, yeah, he told me, I literally, he heard, I heard him say, yeah, I'm the drama king of kings. <laughs> And then I was like, yeah, no wonder why everyone has drama, right? Why we're just like you. Um, I And I'm telling you, that's where that joke came from. So I call him a drama king. I tell him that he needs way too much attention. He just needs to just relax. Isn't it enough that a few of us love him? Does he need to have the attention of the entire world? You know, I joke like that. Of course he does. He's God. He can have whatever he wants. But, you know, um, I laugh with him at things that he that are funny with him. He's very funny. And so I can't, like, sit here and tell you because you probably won't think it's funny because you're not in my life and in my head and, and the things that God says. So when I try to, like, say them out loud, they don't really sound funny. So I kind of gave up trying to do that. But every now and then, one will come out and people will laugh and they'll get it. But a lot of what God is hysterically funny about in my life is things that relate to like our daily stuff and what we're doing. And, um, you know, it's just the way it is. So as you get to know him and if you're really seeking God right now as a bride and you haven't come super far in your relationship with him, you know, you can go as far as you want to go. You call the shots and God will do it. He will meet you where your faith is. And, um, and he is holy and wonderful, but see, I can joke about, he can joke with all kinds of things about, you know, my son does a really funny drunk imitation too. Um, he's only 13 and he's never even seen a drunk person except on YouTube, you know, <laughs> but he likes to imitate it cause he's seen my drunk imitation. And, um, we come from family members that drink. And so, um, I don't, I just don't care for alcohol or any kind of substance. I just, it messes too much with my natural bliss high from God. So I don't like anything to get all up in there. And so I've just, that's just me personally. I don't think it's bad if you do drink. On Mother's Day, I had a glass of champagne because when I got my pedicure, they, they served it to you. And I, I just went ahead and did it. And, and then I was like, oh yeah, this is why I don't drink. Cause it just made me kind of tired. <laughs> And, um, but I was a little goofy, goofier than normal. Anyway, um, but you know, like I said, guys, to the pure, all things are pure. And these evil things, you know, um, if you've, if you've come to God out of a lot of evil stuff, God can make it pure like you're a brand new, fresh, innocent person. Yeah, you might have the memories, but he can wipe those away too. You might have the memories of some of that sin and you just can't even joke about certain stuff because it's just too real, you know, but, um, all in God's time, you know, there's healing and, and there's a lot of healing and laughter and, and God told me the greatest sign of faith is someone that can laugh because it shows that you're not stressed because the opposite of, um, stress is faith, faith. And everyone's so stressed out and taking medicine for everything nowadays. And, you know, I'm happy to say that God's my medicine. You know, I don't even take Tylenol if I don't have to. I just trust him for everything. And I will if I need to. Like today, I'm probably going to have to take some Tylenol from the stupid root canal. But um, I'm just blabbing on because I just wanted to give the other side of God laughing at me and with me. You can do this. We can do this. You can do the same with him. And I, he just wanted me to say that. Tell him how you how you laugh at me sometimes. <laughs> Tell him how you, you, you make fun of me and you give me a hard time too. And that's why I give him a hard time because he gives me a hard time, you know. And uh, But in a good way. It's all in a good way. It's all the kingdom of heaven. God saw my son in visions. Jesus just sitting around, hanging with people, having nice conversations, you know, and, and laughter was part of it. Seriousness is part of it. But, you know, um, he's a God can meet you in every, every situation. 
and um, I know people like have excuses to me Judy I still don't hear them like you do well you may not ever hear them like I do because I'm me and you're you maybe there's a special way you're supposed to hear him you know but I still don't believe you when you say you don't hear him because God told me that wasn't true no matter how many people try to get in my face and say I don't he said nope rebuke that lie my sheep hear my voice and they know me what scripture is wrong see I can Bible thump again and you can hear him and you will if you keep hanging in there and you believe. And God told me to be really strict about that and tell people, no, 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 quit saying I can't hear him. You say in the name of Jesus, my sheep hear my voice and they know me and this day, Lord, I will hear your voice and I will hear it loud and clear and I will not stop until I hear it and I wanna be talking back and forth like you and Judy all day and you will and, and, and be ready for it because it's, it's a wild ride. It's a wild ride, bride. And I love you guys. And um, I just crossed the Golden Gate Bridge. And I'm going to go park and get ready to get all numbed up. And um, it's in the Lord's hands. I don't even pray for a good root canal anymore. Because I'm like, Lord, if you wanted this root canal to be done in the first appointment, you would have. There's a reason I'm coming down here. He probably just wants me to spread his glory to San Francisco. Because San Francisco needs what I have. And um, right now I'm spreading his glory by just my very presence is in this city. The Holy Spirit of mighty Jehovah God has come into the city even stronger today. And if he wants my root canal to be finished today, it will be. And I want it to be, but I don't ask anymore for what I want because your will be done, God, not mine. Even if I can't stand dental work, I just, your will be done. I love you guys. Bye.